right, good evening. Thank you for watching on Facebook Live. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, we thank you for watching. Certainly, these are different days and uh, trying to get used to some different things. What we've done tonight is we have canceled our public assembly of service. The reason we have done that, my wife and I are both under the weather, and um, normally that's not a big deal. You uh, go to church, take some Tylenol, whatever you do, but uh, just on the side of caution, uh, we've decided to self-quarantine for a couple of days, and so uh, we had no public service tonight, but, also, but we did want to bring a service tonight, and uh, I'm going to pray, but let me encourage you to get out your Bibles tonight and turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 6. The Gospel of Matthew and chapter number 6. I have a message that's uh, it's a blessing to me to think about the uh, last couple of days and I trust it will be a blessing to you. I believe it's very fitting for uh, what we're going through uh, during these times. And so uh, have your Bibles open to Matthew chapter number 6. Before I pray, uh, let me just, for our church folks, we're doing some things a little bit differently because of the virus. Uh, this coming uh, Saturday will be no visitation or bus ministry. We're not running the bus at this time, so no uh, organized visitation on this Saturday. And uh, no Sunday school on Sunday. Uh, we will have services here for those that would like to join us at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning and 7 o'clock Sunday night. All right, and so that'll be uh, the services here. Also, again, if you're not joining us, I uh, hope you, that you would uh, join uh, again through YouTube or Facebook Live. Let me encourage you to be sharing these things. I've been bringing some messages uh, that I trust to be helpful uh, for what we're going through. And so uh, let me encourage you to share it and, uh, and trust that they would be a blessing <clears throat> to others as well. Well, I'm going to spend about probably about 30 minutes in the Word of God with you tonight, but let's pray before we do. Father, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for... Uh, again, this opportunity to open up your word. Thank you for uh, how true it is and how wonderful it is, Lord, that it's, uh, Lord has the answers for everything that we need. And Father God, I just pray, Lord, that tonight's message would be a help and a blessing to, uh, Lord, to somebody, but Lord, to many folks. I pray that uh, just would be an encouragement and a blessing. And uh, the truths that we share from the Word of God tonight would uh, just accomplish much in our hearts and in our lives. Father, we do pray for those, uh, Lord, that are watching. Also pray for our church family, Lord, tonight. I know there's many needs. Father, you meet each one. God, we could give, but again, we just pray, Lord, you meet with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter number 6. I want to talk to us tonight on this thought, how to win in the war with worry. How to win in the war with worry. Do you ever worry? Uh, somebody would say, well, I was, I was worried you were going to ask me that. Amen. We all are uh, tempted to worry. We all worry. And it uh, doesn't matter who you are. Uh, we all at times worry. We ought not to. Uh, let me say about worry right off the beginning that worry uh, is a sin. Uh, it is not just a weakness but it is a wickedness. And so, uh, but we all do it, do we not? And we need to confess it as such, but we need to ask the Lord to help us uh, in our time of worrying. So let's look here in Matthew chapter number six. I'm going to begin reading in verse number 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. Now when the Bible says take no thought, it has the idea there of anxious thought. Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, 
tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Take no thought. When he says that, and we said, uh, saw that a couple of times here in these verses, it has to do with worrying. Interesting, when you study those words, take no thought, uh, the root word which means to divide. You think about when we worry, our minds are divided. We should be thinking about other things, but worry has our mind divided, and it's a distracting, dividing thing, worry is. James said it this way in chapter 1, verse 8, that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And there's nothing more destabilizing than worry. Now, when Jesus says, take no thought, here in verse 25, he's not talking about that we shouldn't plan ahead. As a matter of fact, he lifts up for us the ant. And he says, consider the ant, how the ant provides and, and stores away in the summertime and, uh, and prepares for the wintertime. He's not talking about planning ahead. He's not talking about having a flippant attitude, a happy-go-lucky attitude that does not provide for tomorrow. The Bible teaches that we are to remember the law of sowing and reaping. And so there is sowing and there is uh, reaping and, and so the Lord is not against a uh, planning and, and the Lord is certainly not uh, uh, wanting us to have a lackadaisical attitude. Somebody said this way, it is not foresight but foreboding that is forbidden. Let me say that again. It is not foresight but foreboding that is forbidden. Three simple thoughts I'm going to lay on your heart tonight. Number one, I want us to look at the cause of worry. The cause of worry. What is it that people worry about? Well, uh, the Lord Jesus here, as he gives this uh, message on worrying, he kind of summarizes it in four uh, areas that people worry about. First of all, he said people worry about food. It says here in verse number 25, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat and what ye shall drink. Verse 26, behold, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? The Lord Jesus uses an interesting story right there, doesn't he, about food. And he illustrates it by a farmer. And he says, hey, what kind of farmer feeds his chickens, but yet doesn't even take care of his own children? And, but people worry about food. You and I usually don't worry about food. I, I realized last week there was a run on the stores. And, but the truth of the matter is, most of us, even if we wouldn't have gotten some extra groceries last week or so, probably would have had enough in the home to feed ourselves. Maybe not exactly everything we want, but <clears throat> enough food in the house to get through a week or two. You know, that's not that, it's not that way in, in many places in the world. Truly, many places have to pray and provide for their daily bread, and, and there is a temptation to worry, am I going to eat today? We don't have to worry about that, thank God, but, but people worry about food, and people worry about fashion. He talks about clothing here. He talks about fitness in verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And then people worry about the future. In verse 34, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And so the Lord says, that's what people worry about, food, fashion, fitness. We worry about our health. Many people worrying about that today, aren't they? Worried about their health and through this uh, pandemic that we're going through and the future. What does the future bring? 
Uh, what is this going to do to our country? What is this going to do to our economy? What is this going to do to our churches? What's this going to do to my family? So we worry about the future. And so uh, those are the things the Lord here gives us that uh, we could say are the cause of worry. Number two tonight, let me talk to you quickly about the cost of worry. I want to get to my third point, but just to lay some background here, the cost of worry. May I say, first of all, tonight, worry is harmful to you. Worry is harmful to you. I, there are few things that will do more damage to you physically, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically than worry. Have you noticed that it's not the big things we worry about? It's the little things many times. It's the little things that get to us. Somebody said the mighty lion may kill, but the little ants will do far more damage by uh, picking the carcass clean than the mighty lion did to that same animal. Many times it's the little ants that gnaw at us. It's the little things that we worry about. It's, but it's harmful to us. May I say second of all, no, is it harmful to us, but it's harmful to others. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever known a person that, I mean, the room just seems to brighten up when they leave the room? <laughs> yeah. You know people like that? I mean, kind of an Eeyore personality. I mean, it could be a beautiful day, and, and that person would say, yeah, it's nice today, but you know, we don't have many like this. And uh, they, they're just kind of always sour, always uh, that way. And and they just kind of brighten up the room when they leave. You know, uh, you can get around people like that that are always down and all those things. You know what? They discourage us, don't they? It's harmful to others. But may I say thirdly tonight, and look at verse 30, if you would, of our text. I want to say worry is a wound to the heart of God. You cannot see my children, but right behind the camera tonight, there's Hallie who played a little prelude for us tonight. And Evan, he's right behind the camera as well. And uh, let me ask you a question. What do you think it would do to me as a dad? I mean, I've always taken care of my children. I've always provided for them food and more food than they can eat. And I've always provided for them a place to sleep and a roof over their head. Let me ask you a question. What do you think it would do to me if my kids came to me every day and said, Dad, are we gonna eat today? Dad, are we got a place to sleep today? Dad, you going to buy us anything to eat today? Dad, are we going to eat anything today? Dad, I mean, and just constantly bombarding uh, me with that. You know what I'd be tempted to say to my kids? And I probably would say to my kids. I'd say, haven't I always taken care of you? You think God wants to say that to us tonight? Haven't I always taken care of you? Look at verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? You know, for many of us, this is our first pandemic, but listen, it's not God's first pandemic. This is not the, the first trial that God's ever gone through. This did not take God by surprise. And you know what? We can thank God. We can look back in our lives and see how God has always taken care of us. And boy, that gives us great faith, does it not? knowing that he was going to continue to do so. And so, what a poor testimony it is and how it must break the heart of God when we worry. God will take care of us. Let me give you the third thing tonight, and that is the cure for worry. That's what we need to talk about tonight. Because we all worry at times. We've seen the cause. We've seen the cost. But tonight, look for, with, with me for a minute for the cure. What is the cure for worry? Well, I believe it's in verses 32, 33, and 34. He talks about why people worry in verses 25 and following. Then he says in verse 32, 33, and 34, he gives us three cures for worry. Number one tonight, I would say this. Number one, consider the Father. Consider the Father. Look at verse 32. For after all these things... Do the Gentiles seek, notice it now, for your heavenly Father. Hey, can you say that tonight? Is he your heavenly Father? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Has there ever been a time 
when you've repented of your sins and have you trusted Christ as your Savior, if you say, yes, I, I, yes, preacher, I know that I'm saved. I know that Christ is my Savior. Then, friend, we have a heavenly Father. We can say that our heavenly Father. And he says, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Consider the Father. You know what? We need to be reminded of who God is in this hour. We need to be spending time in the Word of God daily. Spending time in, in listening to Christ-honoring music and spending time in prayer. Consider the Father. Number two, we need to consider the, our focus. Look at verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now the problem is, many times, we put things first and God second. Oh, we don't exclude God, but we just kind of add God in sometimes. But friend, listen, we need to focus on the Lord, all right? We need to focus. Where's your focus tonight? Is your focus on the problem? Then you're going to be worried. If you spend all day, every day watching the news and the programs about this virus and things that it might do and can do, and you, you, you just saturate your mind all day long with those things, you're going to be worried. You're going to be worried. Consider your focus tonight. Get your eyes on the Lord. And then number three, consider our future. Look at what he says in verse 34. Verse 34, there, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So we have the Father. We need to trust in the Lord. We have focus. We need to put first things first. And then we need to consider our future. Don't borrow trouble. You know what worry is? Somebody said worry is the interest paid on borrowed trouble. Think of that. Worry is the interest paid on borrowed trouble. Let me take a couple minutes before we close. And just say this to you tonight, that for all of us, God has engineered problems to be in our life. Now, we don't like to think about that, do we? You say, well, I, I thought, preacher, I thought God loved me. He does love you, and that's why he does give you problems. Did you know that we would not come to God, that we would not trust God, that we would not lean upon God if we didn't have some problems? Remember what God said to Adam and Eve back in the Garden of Eden after they had sinned? God said something interesting. He said, cursed is the ground for your sake. Not for your punishment, but for your sake. You see, it is trouble that reminds us that we live in a sinful world. It is trouble that tells us that we must that we need the Lord. You know what I'm praying for in times like these? That people realize how much we need the Lord every day, every single day. And so God gives us some, verse 34, some evil. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now the evil there does not mean sin. It means problems and difficulties. We all have that. God gives us those things to cause us to depend upon Him. We all say, oh, preacher, I wish every day was just a sunshiny day. Well, friend, if every day was a sunshiny day, then we'd live in a desert. And then we complain that nothing grows. You know when things grow? In the storms and rain. God sends those storms and those rains that are necessary to us. You see... But what I want you to see is, look at verse 34, that with the sufficient trouble, God gives us sufficient grace. Amen? Sufficient grace. Verse 34, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now here's the thought. Don't miss this. God gives us grace for today, not for tomorrow. We think, you know, why doesn't God give me grace for this that I'm doing next week? Because we're not there yet. All right? Now, here's the thing. If you reach out into tomorrow and pull tomorrow's clouds over today's sunshine, 
you're going to make a mess of things. The Bible says, as your days are, so shall your strength be. God hasn't given me strength for tomorrow yet. You know why? Because it's not tomorrow. If we reach into the future and drag it into today, there are some things that you will do that you'll regret. Let me give you three, these three things real quickly and we'll close in prayer. If I reach into the future and drag it into today, you know what it'll do? Number one, it will bury blessings. It will bury blessings. You see, God not only has given each and every one of us today some problems, God has also given us some blessings. Now, the danger is that we will not see our blessings because we're so worried about tomorrow's problems. But there are plenty of blessings. When's the last time you just counted your blessings? Count our blessings and, and not worry about them tomorrow. Don't, uh, don't let tomorrow's uh, concerns blind you to today's blessings. Be thankful for what you have today. Don't bury the blessings. Be thankful. How many times have I done that in my own life? Worried about something tomorrow. Worried about something later. Worried about something and missing and, and forgetting the blessings that are right in front of me. Oh, may the Lord help us. It buries blessings. But number two, I want to say that when we do those type of things, it steals strength. Worry is not just useless. It is harmful. Not only does it take the joy out of today, not only does worry take the joy out of today, let me tell you what, it takes the strength out of tomorrow. Because what happens is when we go to tomorrow, we'll be there out of breath. You know why we'll be out of breath? Because we, only, we not only carry today's burdens, we carry tomorrow's burdens. We have a double load. God did not want us to carry that double load. You see, God knows what we can carry and how much we can bear. The Bible says this, he knows our frame. A few weeks ago, I bought a pickup truck. One of the reasons I bought that pickup truck is, is that I would like to purchase a camper. Looking at my wife and looking at my kids, and we'd like to do some camping with it. We'd like to use it for our church here and, and uh, keep folks up here. We do not have a uh, prophet's chamber here, but we would like to do that. And one of the things that I'm learning as I've been uh, going around looking at some of these and inquiring about them is that there is only so much weight my truck can carry. And so because of that, I'm looking at that carefully because I do not want to overload my truck. And it can only haul so much weight. If I get a trailer that's too heavy, a camper that is too heavy, I will overload it. I need as its owner, I need to be careful of its frame. There is so much that that thing can carry. And here's the thing. If I buy a camper within that weight restriction, then guess what? Then it can pull it just fine. Can I say us tonight that our Father, according to Psalm 103, knows our frame. The Bible says, as your days are, so shall your strength be. God will not give you a burden that you cannot bear if you use the strength he gives you. But the problem is, first of all, we don't cast our care upon him. The second problem is we not only carry today's burden, we carry tomorrow's burden. And we are carrying more than God desires for us to carry. And, we, and, and so we like to blame God and say, God, why did, you, uh, why did you put all this on me? Maybe it's not what God put on you. Maybe it's something you put on yourself. We've broken down the springs of life. It buries blessings. Number two, it steals strength. It breaks us down. And I'm going to say this, that bear, uh, borrowing tomorrow's problems and worrying about tomorrow's problems, thirdly, it produces problems. It produces problems. <laughs> you ever think about this? The thing you're worrying about might just happen just because you're worrying about it. Job said this. Job said, the thing I fear has come upon me. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever got behind that annoying person you're driving? And that person in front of you is expecting that light ahead of them, that red light, that green light. 
to turn red. They're expecting it and expecting it and expecting it and expecting it. And guess what? By the time we get there, what happened? Yeah, sure enough, it turned red, right? You know what? People go through life that way. The Lord says, don't worry about tomorrow. Well, again, he's not saying don't plan for tomorrow. But don't take anxious thought for tomorrow. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Oh, folks, listen, don't let worry bury your blessings. You know, it'd be good tonight for us just to take some quiet time and just thank God and just think about all of our many blessings. Worrying steals strength. We overload ourselves when we worry. And worrying produces problems. Let me leave you with this thought and I'll pray. The Bible says, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to say if you're out there tonight, we'd love to hear from you, either message on here or uh, if you have my phone number, text me. But I'd love to hear from you knowing that you watched this, listened to it, trusted it was a blessing. And I encourage you again to share it with somebody. If you have prayer needs on your heart, please don't hesitate to call. Text us. And uh, we're here. Again, pray for my wife and I just under the weather. Um, feel pretty good right now. I'm feeling better than I've felt most of the day. I thank God for the strength he gave me to bring this lesson tonight. So um, we're praying for you. Let us know what you can do. Look forward to Sunday services. Don't forget, no Sunday school. But 11 o'clock and 7 o'clock on Sunday. No Saturday activities either. So I know things are kind of bare bones. And um, we're just trying some social distancing and trying to limit uh, exposure with everybody as much as possible during these times. But again, let me encourage you. Take this message to heart tonight. Maybe reread this passage. And let's pray. Father, Heavenly Father, thank you for this, this time in your word tonight. Lord, how it's convicting to me. And uh, Lord, and challenging. Lord, I thank you for it. Father God, help us to have victory over this enemy that we call worry. Father God, help us, Lord, to be um, victorious. Help us to be trusting you in these times. Help us, Lord, to see you work mightily. Pray you'd use us for your honor and your glory. Pray you bless this devotional thought to our hearts now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.